In this video, I cover what overflow and underflow means. Let's start out by creating a variable of type integer named value. The data type defines the size of the memory that is being allocated for a variable. And the size is always fixed. This has implica implications on um, how a variable can be used and on the limitations on the values that can be stored in the variable. So for an integer, this ranges from negative 2 billion something to positive 2 billion and something. So I have outlined these right here. This is the smallest value that can be stored in the variable. And this is the largest value that can be stored in the variable. So let's start out by just doing a regular example. Let's say we initialize the variable to 10. 10 is well between, well in this range of the minimum and the maximum. And so we can do, for example, value equals value plus one. So we add one to the value that we currently have. The value is 10. We read the value, which is 10. We add to it 1. This is 11. And we store it back in the variable. Next, I output this. So I output the value uh, with an end line. Um, I run this program. And let's see what we get. Now, we can probably do this by hand already. In this case would be 10 plus 1, 11. So we know it, it'll output 11. This works all fine. Same if we would subtract, it would do the basic arithmetic. Now, what if we have a value that is at the limit? So let's replace 10 with a maximum value. Then run the program again. And here, what we get is Actually, not the next value, but the most negative value. So we would expect something from 47. We would, by adding one, we would expect something ending 48. Now we do get 48, but it's negative. And if I add, let's say I add two to it, what do we get ne next? Negative 47, because we went, we overflowed. So we hit, hit the limit, the maximum value that we can store. We add one to it, and we are all the, back, all the way back to the minimum. So if we think of a range from, it starts right here, and this is the range, and the middle is somewhere is zero, and then at the top is the most positive number. When we're at the very top and we add one, we jump back right to the maximum negative, and then we add one, 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 one. We get closer and closer to the zero. At some point, we're at the zero. We're in the positive range. We keep adding ones until we're at the maximum number again. If we add one to it, we are all the way back. Um, we are overflowing to the minimum value. What we can do is what now is if we at the minimum value. So this is the value that I have up here. What happens if we subtract one from it? Do you know the answer? If we subtract one from it, we underflow. And that means we come back all the way here at the top. And then we could subtract, we go all the way to zero. So let's do this. Let's assign the most negative value to it is the one I have up here. Oops. And then let's subtract from it. Value, the value that we currently have, minus one. And then I output this. So we will see two numbers. One where I added two, two to the maximum value, which is the one up here. And the next one is I start out with negative, the minimum value. And if I subtract one from the minimum value that I have, 
I end up with a the maximum value for that range. So it, if, if you will, it kind of goes in a circle. If I can either overflow or I can underflow. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.